Hey everyone, this is Jack from the Klutzy Outdoorsman. I've been thinking about doing something like this for a long time. You know, I've come out with this series called How to Buy a Bow, and I kind of talked about comparing bows, uh, what you should do, to kind of find what bows you should try out, and in this next few videos, I'm actually going to be talking about the different accessories that go on your bow. This is a Matthews Verdix. I just got it yesterday, uh, long story short. I used to work at Archery Country and Rogers. Uh, decided to move because my wife and I got pregnant, decided to move closer to the family, and before I could get the bow, I had to pay off the bill. So I just paid it off, and I'm gonna kinda go from head to toe on different accessories you can put on your bow, and why you might choose one over the other. In this first video, we're gonna be talking about sights. Stay tuned everyone. But there are a couple different sites on the market, plenty of brands. Um, I'm not sponsored by anyone, so I'm just going to talk about what brands I think are the best and why you should go for them. Uh, on my Verdix right here, this is a black gold um, Ascent, and the Ascent is a uh, movable site. It has three pins. I'll kind of talk about that towards the end. As for the brand, Black Gold, I think they make some of the best bow sights out on the market, especially for hunting. They come with a lifetime unconditional warranty, which is nice if you ding it, bang it, scratch it, whatever, to the site, they'll replace it or fix it for free. They come with the brightest fibers on the market. They even have this little um, ceramic hood on the top that actually regulates the amount of light that gets to the fibers so they always stay the right amount of brightness. Um, what's also unique about this, not every high-end bow sight comes with this, with these sights, especially with the sliders, you get first, second, and third axis. With, I don't quote me on this because I'm no expert, but with Spot Hog, HHA, and a few other bow sights on the market, they only have first and second axis. So the sights are going to be a bit more accurate out to longer distance, especially if you're shooting up or downhill. Anyway, let's start talking about the different kinds of sights on the market. The first um, sight and the most common is a fixed pin sight. Typically speaking, your fixed pin sights will have five pins to it. Your first pin will be 20 and it'll go down in 10 yard increments. So you'll have 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 yards. Okay, that's the most common. Um, you, most sights, high end sights, you can customize them. Uh, you go on the Black Bolt Gold's website, you can actually design your own. Uh, so if you're a whitetail guy and you only need tw uh, 20 through 40, you can get just three pins. Or if you want to get their big two inch housing, you can fit eight pins in there. And you can really um, get that fixed pin sight to range out to longer distance. Now the big upside to a fixed pin sight is that it's just that. Once everything is set, it's set um, for that bow combination, that draw length, the draw weight, and the arrow weight. Um, that's nice because it's just super simple. You don't have to worry about um, dialing it down at longer distances. You can just pull back, know that the target's 30 yards away, execute a good shot, which is nice. Um, like I said, these are, those are the most popular sites on the market these days. It, no matter if you're a whitetail hunter or if you hunt out west, they're a really, really good option. Some downsides to a fixed pin sight is because there are so many pins in that actual sight housing, sometimes it can get confusing on which pins you should go with uh, for that specific yardage. And what I mean by that is in the, heat of a mo in the heat of the moment, you might put all your pins on that target, grip and rip it, and just hope for the best. Uh, and you know, with some of the other sites on the market, it really makes it, it that can be really confusing and when you go to a single pin or like a, a three pin slider it just make, it gets a lot cleaner and it gets a little bit more precise so that's one downside is that all the sites or all the pins in the site housing can get a little confusing it can get a little cluttered uh, the other downside to them is if you don't have pins that ranges out to longer distances let's say you have a five pin site basically you can only shoot out to 60 yards with that pin. Beyond that, you're gonna to have to start stacking pins, and that can get uh, a little bit confusing in the head too, um, especially at longer distances. Even if you're not going to be 
shooting out to longer distances uh, with like for hunting let's say you, you're only going to be shooting 40 yards it is still nice to be able to practice out to longer distances say 70 80 90 even 100 yards if you have fletching clearance or if you're comfortable shooting out to that distance but overall fixed pin sight it's really hard to go wrong um, spot hog makes some great fixed pin sights they're uh, really bomb proof super tough like I said, I'm a big fan of the black gold land of sights. Um, uh, they're one of their lesser expensive sights is the Rush. That's a uh, 1.75 inch housing. You can get five pins if you want a little bigger sight housing. With the micro adjust housing, you can go with the Widow Maker. It's a really good option. The next sight on the list is a single pin sight. And these have gotten really popular over the years, especially as competition archery starts to get more and more popular. Single pin sights are pretty popular on target rigs, especially in the open category, where your ranges can vary a lot and when you want to be as precise as possible, you want to be able to dial down to precise yardages. So the single pin sight is almost a complete departure of um, the previous sight, the fixed pin sight. Instead of having, let's say, uh, five pins that get you out of 60 yards, you just have one single post, one fiber to look at. And for some people, if you get the, all those side pins uh, confused with a fixed pin sight, going to one pin sight can make a world of difference. When you just have that one um, pin to focus on, it can make you a lot more accurate, especially at longer distance. And being that you have to dial down the sight to a specific yardage, let's say you're going on a 3D course with your buddies, you're the only guy with a single pin sight, and you dial it down to the exact yardage out to longer distance, you will have a little bit of a leg up on, um, on your buddies in that case. Uh, one of the big downsides of a uh, single pin slider sight though is the actual dialing motion. So when you are hunting, you need to be running a setup that is a little bit faster. So getting something like one new modern bows like uh, Matthews, they just came up with their VXR, uh, Bowtech, uh, Revolt or their Revolt Axe, especially that Revolt Axe, that one's a little bit quicker than the normal Revolt. Um, but any of the newer Hoyts, um, they're shooting 340 feet per second IBO. It's gonna be really critical that you go with one of those. And the big reason why is uh, your trajectory. So for a whitetail guy, you know, your, your shots are mainly 15 to 25 yards. You can pretty much keep your sight all, um, all the way up at 20 yards. And if you're running a newer setup, you know, it's going anywhere from, let's say, 335 to 350. That seems where most bows are kind of falling into these days. Um, 340 is pretty, is pretty common. I think most of the flagship bows of 2020 are shooting around that 340 mark. And if you're shooting an average weight arrow, let's say, oh, 380 to 450, depending on your draw length, and if you're keeping at 70 pounds, you should have no problem going from 15 to 30 yards, depending on your setup, with just the single pin um, set all the way up at 20 yards. Big reason why is, um, big reason why is just the trajectory. It's gonna be a lot flatter than if you're running a, a Switchback XT with, um, you know, a shorter draw length or a lighter poundage, just so you can get that smoother draw cycle. Going to a fixed pin might be a bit more advantageous for you if you're running an older bow at a lighter poundage. Now, if you're an out west guy, um, different story. Um, out west, it's a lot more of a dynamic environment. When you're tree stand hunting, obviously you're just in a tree. You're not really moving a lot, not a whole lot of spot and stock. Typically speaking, the animals are almost coming to you or they're coming across a trail that's right below you. So you can kind of know the yardages you're at when you're whitetail hunting. But when you're spot and stock mule deer, you're calling it elk. It's a really dynamic environment. It's not like you can just keep that pin at 30 yards, let's just say, and you're good for a variety of yardages. So if a single pin site might not be quite as advantageous for you in that case. But if you're hunting white tails, you should be all right, just because the engagement distance is so much closer than high country mule deer hunting, for instance. When you're hunting mule deer, um, 
you, your average shot could be 40 to 60 yards in that case. And when you start getting up to those distances, you, there's a lot more you have to factor into it. The wind can play a huge impact on uh, your aerial flight. And if the animal gets up, stretches legs or something like that, takes a few steps, now you have to draw down the bow, redial, rinse, repeat, instead of just being able to just, oh, he's a little bit further, I'm just going to aim a little bit higher on my fixed pin sight. Now I do want to preface that sights are all personal preference. There's a lot of guys out there who kill lots of animals with single pin sights. It's all personal preference. Okay, it's not like one sight is um, hugely better than the other. Uh, but if you're looking for a sight that has a very clean sight housing and might be a bit more accurate out to longer distances, single pin sight would be a really good option for you. Um, Spot Hog makes a double pin sight so you have the straight up post but then on the top of the post you have your pin and then towards the bottom or actually towards the middle you'll get a second pin and they'll have a dual indicator on their little drive wheel so that might also be a good option so you can have it set for 20 but then that second pin might be set for let's just say 40 yards or something like that so you could get a bit more versatility out of a setup like that black gold uh, makes a nice single pin sights again uh, you can get them with just the, the regular Allen key adjustment or you can go micro adjust. Like I said, between fixed pins and single pin sights, it's all personal preference. Okay, so the last sight on this list of different sites you could go with is the site that I have chosen to run on my primary setup here. And that is the um, three pin slider setup. Sliders have gotten very popular over the years just because of their versatility. Um, you get the best of both worlds when it comes to um, your sight. When it, between fixed pins and single pins, this is definitely the most versatile. So how these work is that you have these three pins here. I have them set for 20, 30, and then 40 yards. And then turn this ball around. So with these black holes, they come with 54 sight tapes, so you can pretty much precisely get whatever speed you're going at. And you can notice I have this cut off at 40 yards. And the way that works is that this bottom yellow pin is my slider pin. So in the all the way up position, like it is right now, I have 20, 30, 40 yards all set up. But if I want to range out to longer distances, all I have to do is dial the site down to whatever yardage, all the way up to 100 yards that I want. And I just use that bottom pin. Now, you might be thinking, cool. And then those other two pins, if I'm shooting, let's say, 60 yards, those other two pins become 50 and 40. Not the case. That bottom pin is specifically used just for sliding down. You can't use those other two pins, um, let's say, for 40 or 30 yards, just because the trajectory of your arrow will be off. Now, Black Gold did come out with um, a dual indicator this year, which is really cool. So you can actually use the bottom two pins, let's say, as your sliders because they'll have those little du those dual indicators. And what I mean by that is there's a little red tab right there, a little point that shows you where your sight tape or where that sight is positioned at a precise yardage. You can actually get that now with um, the second one, so you can precisely um, tell where, let's just say, where the bottom two pins are, or where the top and bottom pin are. So you get a great range of versatility with these sort of slider style sights. Um, you can get them in two pin, three pin, all the way up to whoever knows, eight pin sights. You know, that seems a little bit excessive. The most common are three and five pin slider sights. I have chosen to go with a three pin just because it cleans up the housing and I still get all the versatility that I need. So if you're a white tail guy, 20, 30, 40, that's all you really need. That's all you really need. But then when you go out west to go hunting mule deer, you have that option to dial down the sight to a specific yardage. Yes, if the animal does get up, you will need to drop down so that could be a downside if you're shooting up to longer distances, but you still get that versatility. 
but you can practice at longer distances. You can shoot out to longer distances. I would say the only real downside to multi-pin slider sights is the cost. They are going to be a lot more expensive than your fixed pin sights and even some of your higher end um, single pin sights just because there's a lot of technology that's going into them. You know, with the black gold sights, you get the first, second, third axis, so they're really accurate. You can customize them with a dovetail, a wing truss, um, micro adjust for your housing um, up, down, left, or right, or even your pins. So you can spend a lot of money on them. If you want something that's just bomb proof, this Ascent is a great choice. It's all manual. So you'll have to manually adjust your pins and your side housing, but then once that's set, it's set for that bow and arrow combination. So hopefully that helps out guys. Like I said, there's a bunch of different brands out there. Most of them are pretty good. Um, my two favorites are by far Spotholic and especially Black Gold. And you can't go wrong with Black Gold simply because of the unconditional lifetime warranty. But there's a lot of other great sites on the market. Fuse makes some really good products. Trophy Ridge make some really good products. Definitely do your research. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to post them in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up. Be sure, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see future content. Thanks for watching everyone. Really appreciate it.